So today, I want to share the story of how Thumbtack went from an idea to a billion dollar company. In particular, I want to share something that happened at Thumbtack that not only changed the trajectory of our company, but also changed how I see the world. And I hope it will for you as well. You can get some slides up here. So Thumbtack started as a dream. We dreamed that we could build the Amazon of local services. We wanted to help make hiring a photographer for your wedding, or a handyman for your home, or a tutor for your child, as easy as buying a book on Amazon. And we want to do this not just for a few types of service, but for hundreds. First in the United States, but then all around the world. But five years ago, all we had was a dream. We had no money, no traction, no customers. Five years ago, my partners and I were working and living out of a house. In fact, we had so little money, I actually slept in a closet for two years. So I literally was coming out of the closet every morning for two years. <laughs> but despite lots of hard work and struggle, the first time we went to raise institutional money, we were rejected by 42 venture capital firms. We almost ran out of money. This was frustrating and hard and scary, but we didn't give up. Fast forward to today. Today, Thumbtack has raised $275 million from investors like Google Capital and Sequoia. In the last 16 months alone, we've raised over $200 million. We now have a team of 1,000 across San Francisco, Salt Lake, and the Philippines. And most importantly, Thumbtack is now helping more than 200,000 professionals grow their small businesses. Small businesses like Brandon Clark. Brandon was injured in the military and needed to look for a new job. But he struggled to find work, and without any income, he lost his two cars, his home, and he almost ended up on the street with his wife and two daughters. But Brandon had grown up living on the street, and he promised himself when he got off that when he was married, his family would never see a day on the streets. And so using Thumbtack, Brandon started a moving company. And it wasn't always easy, but Brandon was a fighter, and he worked hard, and he's built a thriving moving business on Thumbtack that now supports him and his family. But Brandon actually had a bigger dream. Brandon dreamed that he could start a small business one day that employed other veterans like himself who needed work. And that's exactly what he's done. Thumbtack has helped Brandon bring his dream to life. Because of Brandon and 200,000 other professionals like him, Thumbtack is now on pace to do a billion dollars in marketplace volume in the year ahead. That's a billion dollars in the pockets of pros like Brandon. That's thousands and thousands of dreams coming to life. So, how did we get to where we are today? How did Thumbtack go from an idea in a closet to a billion dollar company? It happened in large part because of a young woman from Manila named Mikan. This is Mikan. Mikan grew up in a very poor neighborhood, just 20 minutes from this auditorium. Her dad was a tricycle driver and made $5 a day. Mikan was not born into opportunity, but like Brandon, she was a fighter. She worked hard, and by working multiple jobs, she was able to escape her neighborhood and pay her way through college. But also like Brandon, she had a much bigger dream. She dreamed one day she could get her MBA, and she dreamed of traveling the world. In particular, she hoped she could visit France. But Mikan didn't have the money to get an MBA, and countries like France wouldn't even give a tourist visa to a Filipina like Mikan. For Mikan, these aspirations were not really dreams. They were fantasies. I met Mikan in the summer of 2009. At the time, Thumbtack was signing up our first professionals, and we ran into a problem. We had professionals like handymen and plumbers signing up and creating profiles of themselves, but when they wrote, they wrote using really poor English. They would write in all capital letters and no sentence structure. And so my partner and I, at the end of every day, would proofread and polish these profiles to help our pros put their best foot forward. But we knew we couldn't proofread these ourselves forever. And so I put a job ad up for a proofreader 
on a site called Odesk, a marketplace for international talent. And knowing nothing about hiring global talent, I was surprised to see that we got applications from all over the world, from India, from the Philippines, from Jamaica, and the United States. And having never hired global talent, I decided to have a half dozen candidates from around the world do a practice test. And when I looked at the results, the candidate with the highest quality, with the fastest speed, with the best English skills, was not an American, but a Filipina named Mikan. A Filipina beat Americans in an English test. For me, this was a jaw-dropping moment, and it opened my eyes to this world of global talent, and it's forever changed how Thumbtack does business. So Mikan started as our sole proofreader. She's working from her home. But she was so talented, we asked ourselves, how else can we leverage global talent? And so we started doing marketing in the Philippines and marketplace operations, and even PR and recruiting. And we did this all without an office. Our team here in the Philippines works from home. They don't need a passport or a visa or a car or even an Uber. All they need is an internet connection and talent. And because of that, Mikan went from an individual contributor to a manager of 10 and then to a leader of 100. And there were certainly struggles along the way. Mikan, like I think any of us would, sometimes doubted whether she could lead such a big team. But I knew she could. I knew she had so much untapped potential, and she did. Mikan eventually grew to become general manager of a 500-person team. <laughs> With the income she earned from Thumbtack, she was able to 10 times her salary. She was able to support her family, fix up their home, when her dad's tricycle broke and he could no longer work, he, she bought him a new one so she could, he could return to work. But most importantly, Mikan was able to reach her potential. She was pushed and challenged and grew and learned how to harness her amazing skills, skills that were previously sitting unused and idle before. But Thumbtack didn't just help Mikan reach her potential. Mikan and the rest of our team here in the Philippines has helped Thumbtack reach our potential. Because we created a work-from-home team, we haven't been constrained by leveraging talent in just one city, like our competitors have. We've been able to access the talent of 100 million people across the Philippines. We now have 1,000 team members who work across all the islands of the Philippines, amazing and smart people, nurses and scientists and professors. And for us, leveraging global talent is not so much about saving money, but rather, it's about expanding the scope of the possible. We move faster, and we think bigger, and we've been more successful than our competitors because we've looked beyond our borders to leverage global talent. Some of our leaders from our team in the Philippines are here this morning. Could you guys please stand up? Beth and Arvi and Marnie and Joffrey. These guys help bring the dream of Thumbtack to life. So you may be wondering, why is Mikan not here this morning? Mikan is not here because she's getting her MBA in France, just like she dreamed. I am so thrilled for Mikan and our team here and pros like Brandon, and I love seeing their dreams come to life. But there's something that breaks my heart. And that's thinking about the millions of people in our world who, like Mikan, have big dreams but never have a shot to bring them to life. Untapped human potential is one of the greatest travesties in the world today. But the good news is it's also one of our biggest economic opportunities. Look at two of the most successful startups of our generation, Airbnb and Uber. These two companies have been so successful because they've learned how to harness very valuable but idle resources. Airbnb turns your spare bedroom into extra income. Uber turns the car in your garage into a cash register. But the greatest unharnessed resource in the world today is not bedrooms or cars. It is human potential. 
Human potential is limitless. The world is full of human potential. And human potential extends beyond any arbitrary geographic boundaries. And yet, we put up all these walls between talent today. There are legal walls that make immigration too difficult. There are infrastructure walls like access to the internet. But most importantly, there are mental walls. Most people never even think beyond their own borders. And because of these walls, there are millions of Mekons in the world who never have a shot to bring their dreams to life. And there are thousands of ideas like Thumbtack that never become billion dollar companies. So let's tear down these walls, let's raise our sights and look beyond our own borders, and together we can build more amazing companies and we can help more amazing people bring their dreams to life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Swanson. We have time for two questions in our Q&A. First question, please. Me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Bettina from the Philippines. Um, I work for the DOSD ICT office. Um, one of the biggest problems I think that you may encounter, which is why you cannot tap on all of the Philippines, is connectivity. Okay. And just for the knowledge of the people here, we are doing a project right now uh, of setting up centers all over, especially the third to sixth class municipalities together with the Wi-Fi connectivity. And these centers will have um, three computers by which people can actually access and do some work. That's awesome. So I would like to speak to you afterwards to figure out how we might be able to collaborate if possible. That's awesome. So uh, when I came to the Philippines uh, for one of my second or third times, um, I had dinner with a group of our team members, and I always asked people how they heard about Thumbtack. And this one woman said she'd heard about Thumbtack a year before, and lots of her friends were working at Thumbtack, and she always wanted to, but she had just joined because her town just got internet access. And for me, that was a pretty amazing thing because you can just see the internet just lighting up the world. And once the internet is there, you don't need a passport. You can work anywhere in the world. And I think there'll be more and more companies like Thumbtack, and I hope there are, who look beyond their borders and hire people wherever there's internet. Mm -hmm. Final question, please. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, my name is Lahi Siap, originally from Cebu City, but based in Chicago now with the uh, U.S. delegation. And um, you mentioned um, in your speech earlier about not giving up, and you said that you had reje gotten rejected by VCs 42 times. Uh, what was that term? What was it specifically that made that 43rd time different? If you could, you know, kind of uh, share on that. I think we got lucky. Um, we, so we, we started, we'd raised angel money before, which uh, was much easier, it was a small amount of money. But when we went to raise institutional money from VCs, the bar is way higher. And uh, I think we didn't realize how hard it would be. And so after a couple months of getting rejected, we stopped and we had a game plan and we said, what do we need to do uh, to fix things? And there was a number of things that uh, we thought we could fix. One was we weren't making any revenue at the time. And so we started running some experiments for how we could monetize. And then we went back, uh, back to the VCs. And you know, this was definitely the hardest time at Thumbtack. Um, but for me, I knew that someone was going to build Thumbtack. And if it wasn't me, it was someone else. And that would make me pretty mad. Um, and so I was pretty determined with my partners just to keep going. And you know, I don't think there was anything magical about that 43rd. It was just the persistence and determination. And eventually, uh, we got lucky and someone said yes. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>